Tourism has been a major sector of Venetian industry since the 18th century, when young and wealthy Europeans would travel here as part of the Grand Tour to witness the fine art and classical music they couldn't experience at home. Today, with the rise in budget airlines, cruise liners and sites like Airbnb, Venice is no longer a luxury. arrived about two minutes ago and we've already seen a fight between a local and some tourists. It's open to all. You're not allowed to sit in here, please. Okay, why, why not? But is Venice still prospering from its popularity or sinking under over-tourism? Over 20 million people visit Venice every year, with most of them focusing their visits on the Piazza San Marco and taking photos along the Rialto Bridge. <laughs> As you get closer and closer to the square, you can see the crowds getting even more intense. So this is St. Mark's Square, Piazza San Marco, and this is the queue for the Basilica. Tourism is what keeps Venice afloat, but at what cost to the locals? In a bid to reclaim the city, the council launched a campaign called Enjoy Respect Venezia, which provides a list of rules for responsible tourism. Hello. You're not allowed to sit in here, please. Okay, why, why not? Sorry. No okay. If you want to see it, you can go to the building, the Ducale. Okay. So I can't help but think that I understand the premise of people not loitering and not getting in the way, but today it's like 30 degrees, so sunny, like really humid, as you can see from my wet head. And it just seems a little bit harsh moving these people on. There's barely any shade in St. Mark's Square. These people are just sitting, minding their own business. They're not littering, they're not being antisocial yet they're basically being told to move away. So what are you saying to people when you're moving them on? Um, we are trying to keep up these rules in order to give you a better Venice, in order to, mm. for you to enjoy it at your most. We understand these rules might seem a little bit harsh and might make it the experience a little bit less enjoyable, but mm. we do this for your safety mm. and for giving you, to present, for presenting first of all Venice uh, as it always has been and to try to keep it alive as long as possible mm. and to give you, uh, for everybody, a wonderful experience in, in here. Thanks for speaking, ma'am. Thank you very, very much. Cheers. Thank you. Again, I understand the premise of it, but it feels like it's maybe just a tiny problem in a city where there are much, much bigger problems with tourism to be addressed. This is an awareness campaign that uh, we think the, the last year. When the people come in Venice have to know some, uh, some rules because uh, we, we have to, to prohibit the uh, jump yeah. of the bridge and it's impossible to go by bicycle. Venice is unique, it's a special city. I think the people have to have fun in the city of Venice but they have to understand that uh, Venice is not a beach. Mm. It's a city, it is an important city, fragile city, and uh, they have to respect uh, the city. People ask me which is the best uh, places in Venice, and uh, I normally answer that uh, you have to lose in Venice. Venice is a safe city, it's not so big. Uh, if you get lose, uh, you can understand the soul of the city. Okay, so you're recommending that I, absolutely. rather than using a map, I should get okay. lost in Absol Venice. Absolutely. I feel for Paola and the huge mission she has before her. I'm going to take her advice and wander a little further away from San Marco. I ventured over the Grand Canal to Dorsoduro to explore one of the many museums Venice has to offer. Is it open? That's the question. Mm -hmm. 
so we're in the Carrizonico Museum, built in the 16th century. We've just arrived at its opening and it offers a rare sense of peace in this busy city. It's easy to forget when you're looking around a museum like this and you're looking at these incredible paintings and reading about them and there are these chairs that you're not allowed to sit on that we're actually in a building where people used to live. This used to be somebody's home and I think it's important to remember that Venice itself isn't a museum. Venice is somewhere where people do still live. It's a working city. So when you walk around Venice, something you see a lot of is people stopping to take photos of the bridges and the canals and the gondoliers, but this is nothing new. So these are paintings from the early 18th century and it just goes to show that people have been wanting to capture this city for centuries. These are the selfies of the past. If you really want to get away from the crowds and see how the Venetians live, then you've got to travel to the northernmost district, Canareggio. Today, this is where the largest living population is in the entire city, and it's also where the fewest tourists come through, meaning it's a great spot for coffee. Venice famously attracts artists from all over the world. And this art school shows the passion is still alive here. Hi, Deirdre. I'm Greg. Hello, Greg. Welcome to the studio. I came actually as a visiting artist in 2001 uh, to uh, the place where we are now, which is Scuola Internazionale di Grafica. I do have to pinch myself on a daily basis. I, I, I sometimes think, my goodness, I'm, I'm living a dream, really. Did you, do you have much interaction with tourists yourself? Um, I came out my front door to find a small family having a picnic on the ground. Um, I would never sit there because I know that rats pass by there during the night. Right. It's a, we don't even put our rubbish outside the front door anymore. They've changed the collections so that actually you're, the rubbish collector, collector rings the doorbell and you bring the rubbish out. Okay. Where as well as having my studio, I also curate the exhibitions in the gallery space, SG Gallery. We have a wonderful image of a gondoliera. Where are the Venetians? Actually, sometimes I ask myself that question on a Monday morning when I'm confronted by tour groups of 40, 50 people or more. And um, perhaps they're asking the same question. Where are the Venetians? Because um, it's getting harder and harder to uh, recognise us in amongst all the tourists. Hmm. In a town that looks like it was built for tourism and selfies, it's easy to forget that this is not a film set or theme park. Local activist Tommaso feels that the council is so distracted by tourism that they are ignoring the needs of the Venetians. Vital public housing has fallen into disrepair, adding to the housing crisis fueled by the rise in sites like Airbnb. Come on. This is how public authorities leave public houses. Oh man. And these were all like this when we are. Jeez. We went in 100 people and to stop an eviction of an old lady, 74 years, with a son on a wheelchair because a person from outside Venice, from another city, evicted her for uh, making a uh, tourist flat. And the same person has other two tourist flats in the same building. Look, I think this is even dangerous for yeah. the people upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have four or five of these cases every week. Or you, you, you stop this, uh, this kind of situation, otherwise Venice will definitely die as a city. And the city is a city when there are residents. You can see, no, where yeah. the, the closed houses are. Yeah. How many families could find a house? Yeah. Venice is a unique city with amazing architecture and a rich history that will continue to attract tourists for years to come. My hope is that the local people continue to protect their culture and identity working with the council to preserve this stunning destination as a city for both Venetians and visitors to enjoy and explore.